Hello and welcome to episode four of this sequel for data analysis series where today we're going to be looking at the where clause when we're querying data, we'll look at some operators, functions, wildcards, and yeah, let's get started. So we're actually going to be using the pubs database. Um, in episode two, we originally imported this in from a GitHub script. And I want to start off this episode with something you should know. So usually, um, you'll see that you're actually within this master view, this master database. And so if I click select all from employee, we want to work with that employee table today. You notice we get this invalid object name error. That's because in the view up here, we're in master and not pubs. Now we can combat this and it might be something you should know at this point um, by typing in pubs.dbo where dbo is the sort of de facto default schema that you're going to get in SQL Server. And that will allow us to then see into that database and get the information from pubs. Now, we could just change this view at the top here to actually reflect the pubs database. And that way, we can actually just go back and start to get the data directly by just querying from employee. So it's important to note that there. So we can start to use the where clause and we'll just narrow down this data by saying where job ID is equal to 13. And you'll notice that, okay, when we execute that, we'll get a drill down result, but I'm also putting in semicolons at the end of my queries. It's best practice. Um, although it's not really mandatory in most cases in SQL Server, it's still good practice. And if you're using other relational database management systems, you may be required to do this. So good to get in the habit of that. So I'll be doing it going forward. And then we can actually tidy this up. We can say we want the first name column, return the last name. And also, if we want to take this higher date, which you see is in long format, it's got the date and time, we can actually use this year function, wrap it in parentheses and take the higher date. And that's going to extrapolate the year. And you'll see I'm doing as higher year because we need to name it because it's a virtual column. So you'll notice I get no returns for anyone who's hired after 2000. Well, that simply means likely in this data set, people weren't hired after 2000. So if we put before 2000, there we go. We get a nice return and, and a way where we can actually use a function on top of the where clause to make our life easier, get some better data in our virtual column as well. And you'll notice even after using the where statement, I can't refer to the virtual name higher year. I still need to use that year and higher underscore date column. Now, if we want to introduce sort of multiple constraints, we can actually, on top of the where, we can actually add in the, the and operator. So we can say they need to meet the the higher date before 1990, they need to make that constraint, that criteria when we're querying this data, but also that job ID column. When it aggregates through these rows, it needs to see job ID 12 there as well. So we've now got two constraints and we limit that data from many rows down to three. So that's very good and something that's commonly used there, combining the AND operator or the OR operator as well, which we're going to look at now. So we can actually say here, we want the year, the higher date to be before 1990 or the job ID is equal to 12. Now, obviously in certain instances, you may have, you know, different criteria, but the functionality remains the same. So we can, you know, if we want to query data and we're not quite sure on the exact specifics around it, around the answer that we're trying to achieve then, or might be a good option to sort of drill down, but still leave that those options open. So by using parentheses, we can actually combine the where clause and we can add in and operators and we can also add in the, the or operator also. And we just need to remember to use our parentheses and for best practice, that semicolon. And we can execute that and we get a bit of a, a mixed bag there returned. There's a, if you have a specific data sets or maybe some, some better use cases for this, but yeah, we can, we can start to, you know, start to build with, with different operators on top of that where clause 
and really control and shape the data that we're returning. So again, we could re we could change this to the employee ID needs to equal the employee ID if we if we had that to hand of Alfonso or sorry Pedro Alfonso, and when we execute this query, we get that relevant data back. Now we can also use the in operator after where, after our where condition, and we can actually use that to search a list of values. So let's say we have a list of publishers where we want to return the data, um, and these are denoted by these publisher IDs, so pub ID 0877 and so on, we can do that. And we can also use not in. So let's say we had a list of criteria where we didn't want them to be contained within these publishers because that's irrelevant to the, the answers that we're trying or the insights that we're trying to, to gain, we can use not in and just reverse it. So that's great. And again, we can tidy up this data by taking whatever columns we like. In this case, first name, last name, job ID and pub ID. Now, the last concept that we're going to look at is an interesting one. So we can actually use this like operator on top of where to return results. So we can say here where last name is like A with a percentage sign behind it, which means the last name has to start with A and it can have as many characters behind it as possible. Now, if we put a percentage sign first and O behind it, it means the last name has to end with O. So if we're looking through huge databases of human resources data, that might be relevant. Now, if we put A and an underscore, where an underscore represents a specific character, one character, and a percentage sign behind it, we can start to look at, at names here that start with A and go from there. But we can actually use underscore in this example to limit examples. So every underscore we add here represents a character. And you can see that as we add more, we drill down on the last names. So again, where uh, a key building block and we'll use these um, operators with it combined as we as we grow in our SQL. Um, but yeah, foundational and key to know. And I, I hope you got something out of this session. And as usual, if you like this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.